The second disease in hemolytic anemia is paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. So, I think the name of the disease, from the name of the disease, you can understand what the disease looks like. Hemoglobinuria means we are dealing with intravascular hemolytic process, yes? Hemoglobinuria, hemocytrinuria, decrease haptoglobin in dark colored urine, usually these are, these are indications for intravascular hemolysis. If it is intravascular hemolysis, that means the problem where? The problem within the vessels, okay? So the problem inside the vessels, I mean. So there is something, so there is something attack red blood cells. So this is, this is red blood cells attacked by special kind of proteins, usually out, and these kind of proteins or enzymes called complements. Okay, this is the mechanisms of paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin A. Basically, the complement attack the cell and responsible for intravascular hemolysis. That's it. Why this occur? Need to know. This is this is this is in this patient. Needs to know normally. So normally, what what I will have? Normally, what I have? Normally, I have this red blood cells and red blood cells. There is a specific kind of protein, a specific kind of protein called GPI and core protein. Okay, this is GPI. And anchor protein responsible for responsible for attachment of of red blood cells to another kind of protein called CD55 and CD59. Why this is important? This is usually important. This is really, this is extremely important to stabilize complements. So in this case, there is no attack of complement of red blood cells, so the red blood cells will stay safe. Okay, sorry. So the red blood cells will stay safe in this case. So, there is no complement activation in this case. So, if you have GPI protein, that means no activated complement. Because once the complement become activated, that means attacking red blood cells. This is normal. In paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, you will not have GPI protein. Look at this cells. Look at the cells. You don't see any GPI protein. You don't see any red. So I will put this on the red, on the put on the membrane. That means on the membrane there is no GPI protein. So this is first. If you don't have GPI protein, that means you don't have the the blue one also, which is it, which is no CDs 55 and 59. So as a result of all, all of this all of this missing, you will have now activated, activated complements. Okay, usually this is the, the process. Intravascular hemolysis occur in the vessels by activated complement. Activated, as a result of activated complement, now you will have intravascular hemolysis. This is usually enhanced if the activated complement usually enhanced by acidosis. That's why, that's why Paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria usually occur at night. So acidosis basically enhance, makes enhancement to complement lead to intravascular hemolysis. And this is usually the same, this is basically the mechanisms of the test. Usually we call this test ham test. What is ham test? You will take a serum of the patient and acidify the serum. So acidify serum of a patient. Once you acidify the serum of the patient or a patient which which have paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, hemoglobinuria, this will lead to the activated alternative pathway in him in complements. Once the complement become become activated, lead to intravascular hemolysis because you don't have GPI and you don't have CD55, CD59. Okay, these are the pathophysiology of paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Now we want to talk about some clinical features. Put in your mind first, it is intravascular hemolysis. Intravascular hemolysis, that means hemoglobinuria. Okay, I hope you remember all of these. That means hemocidrinuria. Okay, and dark color urine. And iron deficiency anemia. This is important, really, the iron deficiency anemia. So we'll see in this patient hypochromic microcytic anemia. Okay, these are the feature of intravascular hemolysis. So how about stem cell features? Stem cell features, usually in paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, you are dealing with the stem cells problem, okay? You are now dealing with the stem cells problem because the stem cell itself does not have GPI protein because of gene mutation. Actually, there is gene mutation which called PIC, PIC A gene. I didn't talk about this, but you don't have, no, here, you don't have GPI protein because you have problem with gene called 
PIgA gene, you don't have this gene which is responsible, which is for which is responsible for synthesizing GPI protein. So that's why it is stem cells problem because the cells itself it's missing a gene. As a result of stem cells problem, you will see two important consequences. Any stem cell surgery will deal, the patient will end up with pancytopenia. And because of the stem cell, some problem or some malfunction in the stem cells, an increased risk of, an increased risk of acute myelogenous leukemia. Put in your mind also this important consequences of paroxysmal lecture on hemoglobinuria. What other things? In, um, Interesting things. Platelet usually, platelet usually there is a problem with the platelet aggregation. That's mean increased platelet aggregation leads to leads to the specific type of thrombosis, usually called venous thrombosis, in different in different vessels. Hepatic vein thrombosis usually is hepatic vein thrombosis is characteristics or some of la landmark features of paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. You will see a patient with right flank pain, right right hypochondriac pain, chronic. And then by ultrasound, you will see hepatic vein thrombosis. Usually the patient is young. Blood films show hypochromic microcytic anemia. Hemoglobin urine, hemoglobin and hemosiderin in urine. So it is usually dark color urine. And if you go to the blood film, you will see decreased white blood cells, platelets, and red blood cells number. That's when you are dealing with three basic consequences. Pancytopenia, iron deficiency anemia, and hepatic vein thrombosis. What are the consequences and what are future consequences is acute myeloid leukemia. Again, the problem is gene problem, BIgA gene responsible for specific kind of synthesizing specific kind of protein and core protein, no GPI protein, so the complement will be activated. And this is the whole process of intravascular hemolysis in paragrasmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria.